Hey Skelsley fans and welcome back to episode three of the skill series. We are going to be covering the art of braking. So we will be delving deep into hows and whys of braking, how, how braking can actually make us ride faster and just a few little tips on uh, just smoothing out the kind of brake pressure and that the, the, the key word is modulation. I would like to introduce you to a good friend of mine and Skills Loops. Uh, he's been on a few courses and just an all round really nice guy. And he's also got great coffee. So make sure you go and give him a tag later. None other than Lex. Come on in. How are you, dude? Yeah, good, dude. You well? Yeah, man. Good to see you. Yeah. So what we want to do is delve into braking and um, really think about the the kind of modulation and how we can be, uh, brake better to be a better rider. So basically sure. uh, going slower to go faster. Cool. So how, how do you find it, your braking? Um, if anything, I'm a bit heavy handed on the brakes, I think. Yep. I tend to hesitate a bit too mm -hmm. much. Um, so yeah, looking at getting control for stopping and not necessarily hanging on the brakes as much. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. The big question, and it's what everybody wants to know, two fingers or one? Uh, one. Yay! It's a good start. So this is just a showcase of what not to do with braking. So never jab on those brakes. Try not to skid out on the trails, and really try and control the kind of modulation. Are you guilty of being a two-finger breaker? And if you are, you really should change right now. Go and get your motor tool press pause, go and move those brake levers onto your single finger braking. And it's not just because it looks cool, it's because it works. So I'm just gonna ask Lex to put uh, two fingers out, uh, out on his brakes. And if you put your finger just underneath the ring finger, feel that there's a gap, which means that your control is actually on the kind of small finger. So the easiest way of uh, rectifying this is by taking your fingers off the brakes uh, entirely and just grab your grips as you would normally. So just get nice and comfortable, uh, nice and centralized. And then all I want you to do is just point those fingers out. So when you point the fingers out and they relax, they should just relax right in the kind of nook of the actual levers. So you can see uh, uh, Lex has probably got a couple of mil that it could come inboard with the lever and that just gives you the max leverage of the lever. It's really, really important this is because the, it puts your control through the three fingers. Most important, it, it puts your bed of your hand onto the grip, which in turn gives you a lot more confidence. So now you've got the nice uh, uh, widespread of your hand, you're taking a lot of pressure off the forearm and you've got uh, maximum leverage on that lever. So one of the best pro tips I can give you, and I'm gonna give you this for free, is the float. So the float is the little bit on the lever which does nothing. So when you pull it, there's that little bit of kind of modulation on the actual lever, but the pads don't actually touch the disc. I find a lot of people uh, over brake when they are going down kind of steep kind of terrain uh, and this snatchiness of the brake is a big cause of people going up and over the bars, which is never a good thing. So what I want you to think about doing is, is especially if you are going into something that's a little bit scary, you're, you're a bit nervous, um, or you just want a, the feel of control, is actually just pulling the lever a little bit in. So you're pulling the float, so the, the, the actual fluid in the hose is moving, but the pads don't get contact. Float gives you a lot more control and it also keeps the old head happy. So when you are going down steep, steep terrain, it's very easy to, to start over braking. And by just having that little bit of feel on your lever, it actually helps your head feel a lot more in control. So your hand is going to be giving the instruction to your brain that it's in control, which helps you brake less anyway. And then by, by using this float, uh, you only use the bit of brake that you need rather than over braking and snatching the actual le levers. 
It's question time, guys. So, which brake is the most important? Which one slows us down the best? Your front brake will stop you the fastest. It is. How many of you guys said back brake then? So, really want you to think about is the front one is the brake that is going to slow you down, and your rear brake is like your comfort blanket. So, your rear one will slow you down to an extent, but as we know, once it starts skidding, sometimes it can put us in a situation where, uh, especially if you're going uh, across the off camber and you press that rear brake and the back end slides out, we've all, all done it, all been there, uh, and it's never good fun. So, watch that rear brake uh, in certain situations, but it's definitely a kind of control brake, and then the front one is the one that is actually going to kind of slow us down. Now, what can happen if we pull the front brake too hard? Hey, you OTV. OTV, straight over the bars. So a great way of working on your brake control is taking it right back to basics. So I'm just challenging Lex to the box of doom. So Lex, when you're ready, drop in coming in and he needs to stop as best as he can oh he's straight through that box straight through the box so Lex how did that feel a little bit out of control a little bit skiddy big skiddy yeah. bit skiddy what do you think we could change to help us stop in this box of doom uh, probably trying not to lock the wheel up probably help yep definitely um, so uh, skidding um, skidding's caused uh, obviously by us braking too hard or sometimes our body weight being a little bit far forward um, so what can we think about doing actually on the bike to help press the back tyre into the ground? Well, push the bike forward a touch. Yeah, so just move your body weight back slightly and just really go heavy into the feet. That's really going to help drive the, the kind of weight down into the bike. Do you want to have a quick go of that first before we uh, move on? Let's go for it. Yep, so we've really dropped uh, Lex in on this one. So. It stopped in the box, a little bit scared. Um, so we've definitely got a few areas that we can still work on there. Um, but it did stop it in that box. Let's go one more time. It is slippery today, so let's see what we've got. Sprinting in, it's got good speed. That's nice, look at that, loads more control. That was great, Lex, that was really, really good. So what did you change then, what was slightly different? So I put more weight on my front brake and I pushed down through my feet into the back wheel to That's it. keep the wheel moving. Yeah, brilliant. So really driving the tread. Lex has got a really deep uh, uh, actual tread pattern which bites into the ground and this is quite loose today. It's rained quite a lot here uh, at Canuck Chase and this is like a loamy type surface but underneath is like a hard kind of gravelly surface. So by dropping that weight into the bike, it pushes through. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but Lex is a hardtail rider, hardcore hardtail. Um, so if you are on a full suspension, you will feel the bike actually sag in. Um, if you are on a hardtail, you really would be, want to be thinking about those knees bending slightly and, and really pressing down into the bike to kind of get more grip. That's nice, well done. That's good. Yeah, fantastic. So Lex, you've had the box of doom <laughs> and that's about as scary as I promised that this day would get. Um, I lied, I lied a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, so we've just come over to this steep uh, section here and as always, it's a lot steeper than what it looks on camera. Um, so how do you feel about this Lex? Is it a bit nervy? How does it feel? Uh, a bit nervy the first time, definitely. Yeah. Um, just always when you're sort of staring down it feels a lot higher than it is yeah definitely um we'll give you a shot of what it looks like from the kind of top uh, shortly but it is quite steep it's slightly off camber as you turn into it so we really want to be thinking about that brake control using that the float so so to give yourself the confidence and as you're rolling in giving yourself the actual brake control as early as possible so you can feel where the kind of grip is this is a loamy type surface, nice big chunky tires. It's the perfect combination. Um, so yeah, let's give it a go. Let's get up there. Let's do it, come on dude, let's go. So what type of things are you thinking about to kind of tackle this descent? Seeing it's loamy, it's loose, there's a route through it. So I don't want to lock my wheels up at any point. That'd be bad. So modulation is going to be the, 
the key thing. Yeah, good word. Modulation. Write it down. <laughs> it's a good word. So yeah, definitely there's, there's a couple of other kind of hidden routes. The good thing is today, it's actually nice and dry. Uh, so dry routes, you can just ride over them. Don't worry about them. Plenty of grip on there. And actually like a bit like this old one just here, the bark actually gives you, you a bit of traction, which is always a good thing. Um, so yeah, let's drop in. Let's give this a go. First drop in, let's do it. Nice work. Hey, did that feel? Yeah, that was felt really controlled. It looked really, really good, dude. Really, really nice. Keep kind of descent, always have a quick look. Have a look down there first, spot your line. Give yourself plenty of room to set up. Really check that there's no hidden stumps, so there's one just here in front of me. So I'm coming around, I'm using the track stand technique of what we learned in the last episode. Nice big D shape, heels down. I'm really using that front brake, you know, I can stop at any point, looking at where I want to go, nice and controlled. By kind of maintaining the weight in your feet, you're pressing into the bike, which gives the bike a nice uh, feel, and it stops that thing of the bike kind of sliding out and running away from you. So really think about heels down, nice big D-show, chin above that stem, and really use the kind of modulation on those brakes. When to weight shift and when not to weight shift. So when you're going down steep kind of terrain, you really want to think about your body positioning, just sitting back slightly so it puts the weight back into your feet. Never allow that chin to go over the front of the stem because because we don't want the weight going forwards. Lex is just going to drop in and demonstrate. Nice big arms and then just gonna sit back just a little bit, just, just to keep that pressure in the, the, the back end. There we go, it's nice, fantastic. And that's quite a steep slope. Uh, if ever you're passing through here, walk up there and just go and have a quick look. Don't be scared to get out there, grab some cones, use your bags, really think about trying to drill in the actual core skills of braking. Remember, if you struggle to break on the flat, you're always gonna have problems when you get out on the steep. So grab yourself some cones, have some fun with your kind of family and friends, make some games. The box of doom is always a good one, stopping it in that box and making the box smaller. Uh, it becomes really difficult, especially if it's wet or kind of gravelly. It really puts your brake control to the test, so definitely worth doing. Just to uh, summarize guys, Single finger braking, uh, if you've got kids, they may brake with two fingers. That's okay because they don't really have the strength. Uh, but if you're an adult, you should be on those index fingers. Get nice and comfortable. Uh, an angle of your levers, uh, again, about 38 degrees. It tends to be a nice sweet spot. You don't want them too high or, or definitely too low because it picks up that wrist and makes going downhill really difficult. Puts a lot of pressure on that thumb. So about 38 degrees, get your phones out, just check that angle. Um, there or thereabouts is usually a sweet spot, but the most important thing is get that single finger. Lex, have you had fun? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's oh, been helpful. Yes. Uh, you're doing really, really well, mate. I, I really chucked you into the deep end there. So uh, yeah, thank you for stepping up. Um, thank you for the great coffee as well. You're um, What was your business name again? Uh, the Coffee Vagabond. Coffee Vagabond. Have you got Instagram? Yep, it's Coffee VGBD. VGBD, so Coffee VGBD. Go and give him a follow and a like and whatever you do with Instagram. Um, great guy and you probably uh, get to see him at some of the big events, um, like download and stuff like that. So yeah. it's great coffee as well. So yeah. Thanks for watching guys. It's been epic and I really hope that you've got something from this. We do try and keep them short and sweet. There's always much, much more to, to add into it but the basics are kind of generally what you just saw. Um, if you haven't already, whack that like button, give it a big thumbs up and drop a comment down below. Are you enjoying these? Uh, would you prefer a bigger uh, watch uh, with kind of more content? Would you like it shorter? There's about 80% of you that watch and haven't hit that subscribe button and this can only get bigger uh, if you guys do press that subscribe. So please, please, it's free. Whack that subscribe button. Thanks, Lex. Thank you. On to the next one. Let's go. Woo! <laughs>